Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be discussing the infinite banking process in 2024. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I make one of these videos at least once per year. And it's a way of really reflecting on this particular strategy. It is a long term strategy, right? And in that process, so I've been making the infinite banking process video. I started it in 2020 and I've done one video ever since. And you'll notice me go through the process, how it works, just explain the details, and we'll do a little bit of that here. But if you go back and watch them in order, you're going to see me say things that then I either corrected or improved or flat out said, I'm no longer doing this or I'm no longer doing that. So in this video, I'm going to do that again. So hopefully you get a lot of value from this, especially if you're someone that is looking at the infinite banking for the very first time. You're looking at potentially implementing this strategy. You're trying to figure out whether I want to use a whole life insurance contract or an index universal life insurance. You're maybe you're thinking, um, how can I, you know, use this for a particular investment strategy, right? I mean, there's like a million different ways of incorporating this concept into your personal finances, right? So this video is going to give a general overview of what's going on, how I look at this, how I view it, my strategy, my process, etc etc and I also have additional material I got two word docs that if you email me and just simply you know tag this video or put it in the subject line infinite banking process just requesting those additional pieces of material which is really going over like a checklist for you to do personally questions to ask yourself questions to ask the insurance agent questions to ask about the insurance company what to know generally so you have it's literally helping you build an entire framework of looking at this particular method. So with that being said, let's take a look at the whiteboard. I'm going to break it down in different sections here. My golden rule, you'll hear me say this all the time in my videos, you must know your numbers. So prior to even getting involved, buying a policy, I, I really encourage, recommend, advise that you know your financial numbers. You know the current position that you are in, right? And I have a personal method. Once I know my numbers and I'm going to come up with a particular funding amount to put towards a whole life insurance contract to exercise, practice the infinite banking concept, right? We need to know what that net cash flow is at the end of the month. Typically, I will take that number, I times it by 12. So I know how much free net cash flow is available in an entire year. As it relates to funding a whole life insurance contract, you have the flexibility of funding it all at once or spacing it out over 12 month monthly payments. So I look at my net cash flow times 12, and then I times that number by two thirds, 66%. Anything below two thirds of my net cash flow per year, free cash flow, this is available, right? That hasn't been purposed yet in your personal finances i will design a policy for myself for my clients based on that number below right so i can maybe go 50 percent, 25 percent, 10 percent, whatever it is that's like the range so the highest i'm going to go is two-thirds preferably for me because i may have other potential uses for that cash flow at a later point in time that i want to be available and not get all locked up in a life insurance policy right? Knowing that, that's like one of my rules. And I use that same rule. Those who've been following me for a while, I use that same rule as it relates to the velocity banking concept when we're leveraging debt, right? I typically don't like to leverage more than two thirds of the available credit limit in my line of credit, whether that be a credit card, a P-lock or a HELOC. So I use the same thing as it, as it relates to capital. Now, if you're in a particular situation, if you have existing savings, maybe an emergency fund of $10,000, maybe on top of your net cash flow per month, you've already incorporated in your expenses that you save $500 a month. So that's six grand a year. I'm going to count that towards the concept, right? And simply say, okay, instead of saving money in this vehicle in a traditional savings account or even high yield savings or money market or checking or cash under your mattress, we can repurpose that location, transition those savings dollars into a whole life insurance contract. So on top of cash flow times 12 times two thirds, we can also incorporate savings. And that's how you would come up with a, say a higher funding amount, a higher number. But if you're in a position where you're not saving money, you're not investing, you don't have a whole lot of cash flow. Okay. 
I have a particular framework as, as it relates to who would qualify for this particular strategy. You don't have to agree with the standard that I've set, but that's just my personal belief as it relates to who would be ideal for this strategy if we're just looking at numbers, right? Again, you can request this, this document and I'll, I'll happily send it to you. I think at this point, it's like two or three different documents. I have something called Infinite Banking Marketing Terms. So it helps you understand the landscape, all the content that's out there. So when you hear things like cash flow banking, cash flow hang hacking, uh, dynamic banking, infinite banking, bank on yourself, tax-free banking, um, sacred account, master account, wealth capture account. Like if you hear all these different marketing terms, they're probably all relating to one core product, whole life insurance or index universal life. So that is a nice word doc to just have when you're watching videos. You can just, oh, okay, oh, okay, boom, boom, boom. Right. And then I have another, you know, I'll just kind of go through it real quick now that you're together. Let me just share my screen real quick. So just giving you a quick, you know, overview of what it looks like. Infinite banking marketing terms. These are all the terms you'll hear on the internet as it relates to what's the actual product. It's going to be a whole life insurance product. Right. And these are like different terms, what those products are. And then you have IUL as well. Index universal life. That's a, another option. Now, in my personal opinion, when we look at the infinite banking concept in terms of its of its origin, right? The origin of infinite banking comes from a gentleman named Nelson Nash. Nelson Nash pioneered the, the concept, the, the methodology, the way of thinking, the philosophies, the strategies, all of it. And this was prior to Index Universal Life even being a product, right? Index Universal Life didn't come out till the 90s. I think the, the mid or late 90s is when the first Index Universal Life Insurance product was introduced. Well, infinite banking had been already in practice for many years prior to that. And then even way prior to Nelson Nash, you've had wealthy people doing this for their own uh, personal finance. So you can make the argument that any life insurance agent that's licensed talking about the infinite banking concept using an IUL, you can make the argument that they kind of hijacked all of Nelson Nash's marketing and teaching. They say, hey, you know, don't use a whole life because the whole life only produces very low returns here. Instead, use an IUL and you'll be able to create a, a stronger positive internal arbitrage within the policy itself and create all this wealth. So they kind of took a whole different path, right? That does involve higher sets of risk, right? Even though they might say it's safe, internally there's risk involved in it. And all you have to do is ask for the guarantees. And when you scroll all the way down into the late 80s and 90s, the policy will literally lapse, it literally says it on the illustration, right? When you look at the guarantees, however long you want to fund it and then stop, usually once you stop funding an IUL, you are now at risk of policy lapse, right? From the guarantees perspective, just looking at the guarantees. The non-guarantees, no doubt, right? That thing will probably continue to outperform. But these are things that you have to wrestle with as the client. You have to do the research and all of those good things. So let, let me bring it back, just showing you uh, what I've pieced together all these years, right? Then it's companies, right? On this Word doc, all the different companies that are uh, ideal. Then it's like company criteria, what to look for, and then these are like players, all the infinite banking players in the in the in the space today, right? Uh, and then books, right? Books you can read to gain more knowledge, and more wisdom. Maybe you're a reader over watching, you know, content or reading articles, or maybe you prefer a physical book or audio book. These are all different books to get. So hopefully that was very helpful. I want to take it back to the whiteboard here and continue along with my numbers. So knowing your numbers is key. Understanding that the whole life insurance contract can be a substitute for saving money. So if you look at it from its core value right now, focusing right here, we know our numbers. I just want to focus on core value of what a whole life insurance contract when properly designed can can provide in your life, right? So whether it's properly designed or not, a whole life insurance policy is safe, is guaranteed, has guarantees in it. It is liquid in terms of the living benefit being the cash value. It is liquid and available for you to use. And if used properly, the money in the cash value is completely tax free. If funded properly, the death benefit will be completely tax free and the use of the funds while living cash value is completely tax free. There are codes in the in the tax codes that protect us, protect 
a whole life insurance contract, right? It's one of the most protected assets in the marketplace today. And it's one of the very few products that can use the word guarantee, right? Your 401k is not a guarantee. Your TSP is not a guarantee. Your IRA is not a guarantee. Your brokerage account is not a guarantee. This provides guarantees. So it is a safe, guaranteed, liquid, tax-free place for you to store wealth. It's a store of wealth. When you look at it at its core value right there, this isn't even getting into infinite banking. If you get sold on that, then I would say the concept is going to be an added benefit. But if you got sold on infinite banking first, because you've heard of all these wonderful stories and wonderful ways of getting rich through infinite banking and how you can make all this money and positive arbitrage and all this stuff. You don't understand the core value and use of the policy itself and have realistic expectations. You might get buyer's remorse years from now. You might be very upset with your agent years from now when you come to find out that the policy is not performing how you thought it would or you're not getting the positive arbitrage that you thought you would, right? So ideally, you would want to get sold on the, on the core stuff. Had a wonderful conversation with a client. I was showing her illustrations of funding a particular policy for a particular length of time with a particular insurance company, showing her different options. And she very honestly was like, you know what, I, I'm, I'm just not really impressed with the rate of return. Okay, so she had her investment hat on, her investment mindset, ROI rate of return, internal rate of return. How is this producing? How is this making more wealth, right? She didn't turn off the investment hat and was looking at a non-investment, thinking that it would be anything compared to a real investment. So she very honestly said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing everything you've been saying, but I'm just, I'm really not impressed uh, with the results, with the returns. I, I thought it would be way better. You know, I, I heard things on the internet that it would be way better. And I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. This is not a good investment. This does not produce great returns compared to an investment. And so if you're still thinking that way, you haven't evaluated the other benefits yet. And that's because you were sold on the infinite banking concept itself rather than looking at the core values first. So part of my improvement as a content creator and educator teacher on infinite banking, on life insurance, velocity banking. In 2024, I'm gonna be focusing more on teaching about the core values of what a whole life insurance contract can do for an individual. Touching on the other benefits that are immeasurable. For example, speaking with a client, a lady who bought a life insurance policy, I wanna say in December of 2022, right? It was towards the end of 2022, she purchased a whole life insurance contract. She was gonna do it for the infinite banking concept. That's how she you know, came across it. And then months later, she's diagnosed with cancer. Terminal, doctors don't know how long she has to live. I think it was estimating around six months or so. And so she funded this particular asset. And now because of the accelerated riders that are on the policy. There's a terminal illness rider. There's an accelerated death benefit rider. If you become terminally ill and you have a whole life insurance contract, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I believe you can access in the neighborhood of around 75% of the death benefit. So in this woman's case, she was paid out tax-free, a portion, a, a majority portion of her death benefit paid out to her now in her bank account. So if there's one less stress she has to worry about for herself and her family is money because she paid in say a couple grand to get multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars she now has access to pay off all the debt pay off everything settle your affairs put the money in a trust start mapping out how you want your values and principles to be remembered how you want your kids to live and operate and behave when it comes to personal finance. You can hire lawyers and hire doctors and hire attorneys and, and hire everybody you need to hire to really build the type of kingdom you want to operate in your in your household. What is the ROI on that? Like it's just it's like immeasurable. You can't measure that. But that's an added benefit that I personally as a content creator really never talk about. I've never had any one of my clients so far that have purchased a whole life insurance contract and passed away. I know we're all gonna pass away. I know we're all gonna die eventually, but it always seems so far out that we're kind of laser focused in on the 
living benefit, the cash value and how we can use that. So I'm going to be focusing on creating content that really talks about those other added benefits aside from cash value and leveraging and offsetting and positive arbitrage and all this wonderful stuff. So core value, very, very key. Now my process through the documents that you'll request that you'll email me, I have this whole six step strategy here and I've got those prior videos that you can look at and my playlist and all this stuff to just really equip you. So by the time you come to the table, talk to an agent, Tell them exactly what you want, what you need. You're going to be fully prepared. So step one is study and research, watching videos like this, getting educated, right? Taking a look at my case studies, looking at other YouTube channels, reading articles, reading books, really put yourself through an education phase, right? And really consider taking 30, 60, 90 days to just absorb material, take notes, write questions down, take notes, write questions down. Search those questions on the internet, see if you can get those answered for free. Hear that answer from three different people, see if they all align. Are they all saying the same thing or are they saying three different things? Okay, okay, so now I gotta go down these rabbit holes to figure out where is the truth, right? If we, if we seek truth in the marketing, that's really gonna help you be prepared even more by the time you talk to someone because by the time you talk to an agent, remember that agent, their job is to sell you, right? Educate you, teach you on say their ideas, their philosophies, you, you want to have your own way of thinking coming to the table, preferably. A very good marketer, a very good salesman will try to get you to unthink, right? Get you to unlearn what you think you know so that they can plant a new idea inside of you. And then, so it's a dance, right? This is what it is. It's a dance. And so if you buy into someone else's philosophy, you're now in their world. I would just simply say, understand their world. Seek the truth in all of their world and see if it matches up with your values and principles. If you don't come to the table with morals, values, and principles, someone else is going to feed that inside of you. And again, it's going to be a dance and you might end up being led in the dance as opposed to being a leader in the dance right? Deciding whether we go left, light, left, right, spin you around. Okay. All that good stuff. <clears throat> so now coming back to the whiteboard, six steps, study, research, step two, choose the agent. Step three, choose the company. Now this is not in the best order. I'll be honest, but these are critical things that, you know, I, for sure you're going to study and research and more than likely when you go through someone's funnel, you might end up talking to an agent maybe prematurely, which is fine, right? You're just kind of getting educated, right? And you want to set the standard. Hey, I want to get educated. I'm not necessarily ready to design a policy at this morning, at this moment, but I would like to get educated. Where can you point me? What kind of conversations can we have right now to help me prepare myself for eventually getting a policy? I don't know if I want to go with you or your team. I'd like to get to know you first, build a relationship. Is that cool? Yes, no. And you kind of see how people react. So essentially you're choosing the agent. The agent is going to help you choose the company. They're going to present companies to you. Now, again, through your study and research, you might already choose a company. You might do the homework in advance, right? And my uh, uh, Word docs might help you do that. Then step four is choose the design, okay? What kind of whole life insurance design contract would you like? High early cash value up front, mid cash value up front, low cash value up front, right? Ideally, in my personal opinion, the higher the cash value, the more efficiently I'm going to be doing the infinite banking concept. That's just my personal opinion. I don't see a world in my personal finances where it makes any sense at all for me to have less than 80%, 70% of my initial dollar amount. Like if I'm paying in a hundred grand, I want to see in the neighborhood of at least 80% or more in cash value upfront. I don't see a world in my personal finances where it makes sense to have 60% of my cash value upfront or 50% of my cash value upfront. It means I put in 100 and I only see 50. Put in 100, I only see 60. I really just do not see a world where that makes any sense whatsoever. All right, so that's my personal opinion, right? You may not agree with that. For most clients, you agree with most likely having more cash value upfront. It's usually the agent that will convince you to take lower cash value. And then again, it's a dance. It's like, you need to figure out, well, why is that? Why do they want me to have lower cash value up front when I'm funding this policy? So choosing the design is going to be unique. And within design, not just how much went to cash and how much went to cost of insurance, but we're also deciding on different riders. Like there's a, a popular rider called waiver of premium. Waiver of premium rider is a monthly fee, I believe, monthly or it could be paid annual, however, and that covers you in the event you cannot pay your premium, right? That'll kick in. I don't know for how long or whatever, but it 
provides that level of protection and time for you to come up with the funds to pay the policy. Me personally, if I have such a low base premium design, say for example, I'm paying in $100,000 a year into a policy. If I have a $50,000 base premium, that's a massive premium. I would put waiver premium on that, but take the same hundred grand and give me a $15,000 base premium or a $10,000 base premium. Uh, if I already have the ability to fund a hundred thousand a year, paying in a minimum of 10 to 15,000 that covers all my insurance expense, I don't see the need of having waiver of premium on my policy. So that's gonna reduce the cost, which means more money's gonna go to cash value. So that's just me. I wouldn't want that on there, right? And again, there's other riders. There's like a long-term care rider, there's a, uh, disabilities and all kinds of different riders. There's free ones and then there's paid ones, right? So you being able to go through the policy with the agent, having them articulate those to you is important. So that's again, choosing the design. You're really not gonna get to choose the design. You're not gonna get to this point unless you've you know, done your research study, you're talking to an agent, and the agent is now designing a policy with a company, and then you're now having discussion about it. Once you've chosen the design, now you're in underwriting, right? You say, okay, this is what I wanna go with. Now you go through underwriting. You apply for life insurance. It usually takes about, a, you know, maybe two months max. Could be a little bit longer depending on how slow the insurance company moves or how long it takes you to book your medical exam, right? Underwriting can sometimes take a month, two months, just depends. Then you get to the point where you now need to fund it. It's okay, I wanna pay him 50 grand a year. Okay, cool, boom, sign the contract, ACH, boom. Fund it, close, done, agent gets paid, you get your account, you now have a policy, you are now insured. Final step is performing the strategy that you and the agent went over. What are we using this for? Again, if you get sold on this core value, anything you add on top of core value is gonna be an added benefit. So let's look at the strategy, right? Or different strategies that you will hear content creators like myself talk about. So as it relates to step six, performing the strategy as it relates to the infinite banking concept, you can use a whole life insurance contract to leverage the available liquid cash value to invest. And you can create interest earnings in two locations, right? You could be earning money with the same dollar in two locations, right? For example, Let's say you had $1 in cash value and it's earning an internal rate of return of, especially in the, let's say in the first year, okay, it's going to be negative, say 15%. You're actually not going to be earning anything. So you need, to, you need to understand that. So that's like, oh, wait a minute, what's happening here? This is going to take time for this dollar in the cash value living benefit. It's going to take time for that dollar to really grow for real, right? It's going to take some time. When I say time, it's going to take a couple years for it to really grow. But let's say year one, day one, you borrow $1, right? So, well, if you have a total of $1 in cash value, you're only gonna be able to borrow up to 90%. So let's use my um, my leverage rule. And let's say we only borrow 60 cents from the cash value. At this point, you borrowed 60 cents, you're earning an interest rate on the full dollar as if you didn't borrow it in the first place. Now, the insurance company is gonna charge you an interest rate on 60 cents. So whatever 60 cents times 5% in a year is, that would be the most amount of interest that you would pay in a year. The interest is calculated, simple interest, daily compounding, right? So the interest will compound over a period of time, and then the interest doesn't actually have to get paid until the anniversary date, okay? So you have the option to pay your interest upfront early or pay it on the anniversary date. But either way, you have a cost. Now, meanwhile, this full dollar is going to earn a rate of return but in the beginning, it's gonna be negative. Now, what you do with this 60 cents is to your personal preference. If you think that taking this 60 cents and going to earn 6% and you're gonna call that positive arbitrage, you're doing bad math, promise you. You're already in the hole, negative 15. You would need to earn 15, five, you need to earn 20 plus percent or more just to break even on this whole thing, just to break even on this whole plan here. That would not make sense. So that's why you want to get clear on, wait a minute, do I actually want to do this? Okay. So that's just giving you an example on a very, very small scale, just losing $1. Now, if you had a lot of money in there, all right, so let's do $100,000 example. And let's say I've gone a couple of years, I've had the policy for a couple of years now and I let it sit and grow and you you have 100K in cash value and we borrow 50 and we're gonna earn a 10% rate of return 
on our money and the loan interest rate is 5% on 50K and the internal rate of return on the 100 is 3% after insurance expenses and fees and all and whatnot. You got 3%. So 100K times 3% by the end of the year, you'll have 103,000 in cash value, right? Meanwhile, you paid $50,000 at 5%, 50,000 times 5%, you're gonna pay 2,500. There is a $500 spread there. You could make the argument, you could say, oh, that is positive arbitrage. Then on top of that, my 50,000 earned 10%. So I generated five more thousand dollars, paid 25, internally gained 500 more dollars. At the end of the year, I now have 103 in there. With the 50 borrowed out, I paid 2,500 back. I generated five, so net, net $2,500. And so you could say, if you got all 50 grand back plus the 5,000, you now have $55,000 back at the end of the year. And let's say you dumped that into the policy, you would dump $52,500. You would still have 2,500 in cash. And then in your cash value, you now have $103,000. Positive arbitrage, for sure. Okay, great, worked out. So that is leveraging to invest. You leverage a whole life insurance contract to eventually invest in something else outside of the policy. The policy will continue to earn a rate of return in there guaranteed, and your money is now at work. It's the same money. So 100K was still earning a interest on the full 100. Meanwhile, you had 50 barred out. It's almost like you took 100 and made it 150. That's what it, that's what it looks like. And as long as you actually run the math properly, you can actually create that positive arbitrage effectively. Now, if you took out $90,000, right? You know what? Let's let's see what that would look like. Imagine you had 100 in there, you can borrow up to 90%. Let's say you borrowed out 90 grand times 5% that's $4,500. And let's say you earn that same 10%. Technically, internally, you have a negative internal arbitrage of $1,500. Technically. You got, well, 300,000 uh, at 3%. You generated three, paid 45, uh, let's see, in interest. We'll run that back, 90,000 times 5%. Yeah, so I'll delete this. So that would become 4,500. This is now 90,000, 90,000 earning 10%. Now nine grand, pay 4,500 interest. How much did we earn in the policy? Three grand. Yeah, I was right. So internally you lost negative $1,500. Externally with the 90 grand you earned $9,000 at 10%. Nine grand minus 45, 4,500 net from that transaction, right? Goes back and then there's say positive arbitrage out, out here, okay? But internally it was negative. So you can't say, you know, oh, my money is making money in both places. Well, eh, you know, you kind of lost a little bit. Your money went from 100 to 103. And, you know, so you kind of, you, you got to pay the insurance company back $4,500. And if, you know, let's say you got the full 90 back within the 12 months, then all that money went back in, all right? And then you're left with 4,500 bucks, all right? So that's, you know, key, key stuff to look at. That's like, that's fun math, you know? If you have a policy and we've worked together, it's been a while, or you're brand new, and maybe you got a policy with somebody else and you wanna run numbers with me on it, and, hey, you could send me your policy and we can potentially jump on a call and see how I could be of service to you. Love doing that, that's a ton of fun. <clears throat> so you've got leverage to invest. You got leverage to pay off debt. You can do leverage to finance things. All of this has to do with the living benefit of the cash value. The final benefit is you got the death benefit. Understand we're buying a non-investment. You're buying protection. Protection over who? You, your greatest asset. You are your greatest asset. So if you protect you, you're investing in yourself by protecting your human life value. So you get this death benefit, tax free payout, comes with these different riders. If again, you get sold on the core, you're gonna enjoy this concept because it's gonna be an added benefit, but don't make it the main thing. No, I would not make infinite banking the main thing. This is an improvement for me personally. When I got sold on infinite banking, infinite banking was the main thing. So I was only concerning myself with the living benefit. I was only measuring things based on positive arbitrage and doing these different things and leveraging the money and using it here and paying it back and doing all these different things. I started to learn more, spend time with other creators, other smart people in this industry. And then I've been watching content and saying, oh wow, whether this performs well or not in the cash value, would I be? And so now I'm like, wait a minute, I'm actually happy even if my 
dividends don't perform as illustrated on the policy because of all these other benefits i get long term some that are immeasurable and then benefits that i will never see perfectly fine with that it solves for other things that are very very long term ways out totally fine with that so now recap got to know your numbers go through this process right here send me an email request the word docs i'm going to send them to you right tag this video get sold on the core value first safe guaranteed liquid tax free place to store this could substitute a savings account this is a better place to save money than a money market cd checking bond regular checking savings account high yield savings this will provide more benefits long term and short term than those other accounts also the core values don't compare to your investment hat that's different so you want to separate the idea of looking at this as an investment i myself over the years have improved in the very beginning i was looking at it as an investment here's how it's gonna you know make these returns tax-free it's gonna provide all this income and all this stuff then i was like wait a minute this is not an investment even though i knew it was an investment i still was kind of treating it and comparing it and then trying to get in in battles or get in arguments uh trying to prove my position to say a financial advisor or another person in the finance space in the youtube comment section or wherever and i was like wait a minute why am i defending a product in the investment space that's not an investment like, let me fix my mindset here so again you're going to see how i continuously improve over the years and challenge ideas if you don't challenge your own personal ideas of how you view money how can you ever grow personally in the financial space how can you ever grow your personal wealth your personal finances your business finances your household kingdom economy finances how can you ever grow if you don't challenge your very own way of thinking if you don't change your way of thinking how can you ever grow it's a good question to ask yourself so now i want to go into my personal strategy as it relates to the infinite banking concept how i'm looking at it going into 2024 now uh i'm gonna share with you what has been consistent since day one and then i'll share with you what's changed over the years right so let's dive right into it so now my personal strategy with the infinite banking concept is i first save money in a savings account i then bulk up that money together and then on the anniversary date of my life insurance policy i am making a lump sum payment right so i save i try to save 40 percent of my income every single year that's my personal goal included in that 40 percent is my emergency fund which is six months worth of expenses in 2024 over the years i've now grown it to two years worth uh, emergency funds meaning if all goes to hell i have two years to live off of cash capital within the life insurance policy that's what i've been able to build over the, over the years personally so emergency funds and savings dollars go into my policy every single year right and i save 40 per, try to save 40 percent of my income that savings will sit in a savings account of which i then make lump sum i do not pay my policy monthly quarterly semi-annual i do my very best to pay my policy lump sum up front on the anniversary date why the cash value will perform better right the minute money goes into my life insurance policy it immediately goes to work immediately starts to grow so the quicker i get the money in there the better it'll perform that's the core core of what i'm doing my baseline now that i solved for that since i've been funding policies since 2018 and 2019 is when i started my policies in 2018 2019 max fund lump sum save money boom now over the years i've leveraged my policies to invest in my personal brand by running certain expenses through the policy so what i would do is in the beginning i would fund my policy and i would fund it with savings dollars plus money that i was going to spend money that i was going to spend now you can go back and i have multiple videos where i've documented my numbers how i borrowed the money how much money i have loaned out from literally from 20 19 all the way till now 2024 and i'm going to keep documenting it and you're going to see how my mindset is and how I, and you're you're going to even see you'll be able to catch some doubt sometimes like maybe this will work right or i'll say things like i'm doing this now but this is not a long-term strategy so in the infinite banking space there is a marketing strategy 
four, which really is a philosophy, a way of using these policies, which basically states that you can run all of your income or majority of your income can get deposited into these life insurance policies then you borrow against them and you live, you pay your bills and then you make more money and you pay into the policy and hopefully you make more money to be able to eventually pay back those loans that you're you know, borrowing from month after month, year after year. This strategy, I've never seen anyone actually do a case study on it and ran numbers line by line, number by number. I have not seen anyone on the internet do that so i did over the years i've i've literally ran the numbers and i've showed people exactly the amount of dollars that were expensed expense numbers and savings dollars combined it all together and said look i lump summed boom funded my policy then i immediately borrowed out to pay a tax bill to pay these expenses this is what i was doing and i was saying the whole time i was like in the short term there really there's not a positive arbitrage gain here i'm buying time if we look at it over the long haul you can make the argument that you know once a dollar goes in there into the cash value that dollar is going to grow forever so eventually it'll make a return but if i don't cover the loan interest year over year and I let it compound, it's not going to matter, right? It, it's just, it's not going to work out. The math isn't going to play out. So I personally made myself a guinea pig and I personally did that. Not all my expenses, as I said, certain expenses. And I did it in the most efficient way I can possibly think of. And again, I have not heard any content creator on any of the social medias talk about this. So my strategy was I fund a certain dollar amount into a policy and I would borrow money out. But before I borrowed it out, I was leveraging 0% credit cards that had statement balance credits of spending three, $5,000 or more within the first 90 days. That's key. So that's a couple hundred dollar bonus there. Then I was using credit cards that were 0% for 12 months on purchases. So I would specifically identify personal and business expenses that I could pay on an annual basis. These are your subscriptions, maybe phone bills, car insurance, any bill that I could switch from monthly to annual that would save me money on the bill itself. Save me 10%, save me 5%, save me 15%, save me 20%. So I'm saving money on the bill itself. Maybe the bill is $500 a month, that's 6,000 a year, but if I pay in full, it's $5,500. So I save one month's worth, a no brainer. Well, how do you come up with the 5,500? Well, I ran it through a 0% credit card for 12 months. That also gave me cash back rewards and statement credit. So save 500 plus earn 3% in cash back rewards on 5,500 plus get $300, $200, $100 statement credit on the expense itself for spending three to $5,000 or more within the first 90 days of opening the credit card. I, let me tell you, I was done, 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 done. I was doing it. Despite all of that, over the last four or five years, I can come to you so honestly and say, this is not the most efficient thing to do. This is not what's going to get you a wonderful positive arbitrage because I did it. I actually did it. Was it beneficial? It absolutely was. Like it absolutely was, especially long-term. Long-term, it'll pay off. But A, I need to continue to make more money. And B, in order for it to work, I have to pay the loan interest upfront every single year so that the interest doesn't compound and take away all my gains, all my rewards from that because that can happen. That's key and critical. And three, you need to have a strategy to pay back the loan because it's, 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 it's a loan to yourself that you use. That was, it was money that was going to leave your economy anyway. So that's the way my mindset was. I was like, oh, this money is going to leave my economy anyway. I might as well flow it through the policy, bar it out, da, 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 do all this stuff. I'm telling you, it sounds great. It can be awesome. It can be pretty cool and unique, but all you're really doing is buying time so that you can make more money to eventually replenish those loans and then deploy it for something else. But if you make it a long-term strategy where that's all you do is fund a policy, bar it out, live off of it, pay your bills, that is not profitable. I've ran the math. It doesn't work. It only works for a temporary period of time. And you can only borrow so much out of the policy. So in my particular case, and again, you can look back at my case study, you can look back at my numbers, the amount of money I was throwing into my policy is $70,000 a year. 
the most I was borrowing out of it was 30, 40,000 in any given year. So I had a big gap to allow the compounding effect within the policy to you know, allow that to, to grow. And I was paying my loan interest every single year to make sure that it doesn't compound the, the interest. Plus, to an extent, I was paying back some of the loans and I max funded the policy every single year on the anniversary date. I did not do it monthly. You need to do all that for this to actually work. And again, you need to keep in mind, this won't work long term. So from 2019 to 2024 or 2023, I did that strategy and then I, I stopped it altogether. All of 2023, I dedicated a lot of my cash flow towards paying back my loans, paying them down. Now going into 2024, my strategy has shifted. So I went from leveraging to invest in personal brand by running certain expenses through a policy. By the way, this was successful. I have built a personal brand. It worked from 2018, 2019 to 2024, going from zero subscribers to now well over 50,000 subscribers, being able to get interviewed by very smart people, very good business owners, being able to host my first live event, being able to serve thousands of people offline, online, being able to collaborate with other content creators, I would say I've been able to successfully build a personal brand that has a good personal reputation, that has good values, that stands on morals and principles, right? In the personal finance space. And now from here, the brand is on automatic. It is just being built on automatic. There's systems in place that are building this personal brand on automatic, right? So that was a success. You could say I've positively arbitraged there for sure because with the policy and everything I've been able to do with my savings, I've been able to multiply my income right over the years. Right, I 10x'd my income from, from 2,000 a month to 20,000 a month. And then from there, I've been increasing it to 25, 30, 35. I've had 50K months. I've had 75K. I had one 75K month. I've had multiple 40K, 50K months, but on average, it's been 30K, 35K months on average for the last five years, right? Not bad at all. So that, that worked, but now I'm no longer doing that. So after now going on six years of owning my life insurance policies, I'm no longer doing that. That no longer is efficient for my strategy. I am now investing for pure ROI and I'm paying off debt. So one of the things I do for ROI is I fund an HSA account. The max per year right now is $4,150 and principal dollars I've paid in my HSA is somewhere around 10,000 and some change. And the value of my HSA is now 12,800. It's almost 13 grand in value. So it's been growing over the years. That's pretty cool. In addition to that, I've consistently invested back in the personal brand and in my business, but but not in the form of running expenses that are like, you know, like consistent. This is more like maybe one off expenses, you know, like a marketing strategy or coaching or something like that, that will yield an ROI like a boom, I put 10,000 in here, this is going to bring 40,000 back. All right, this is going to produce 50,000 This is going to produce 100,000 like that. And my main thing now is I've been paying off debt using my life insurance policy. So in addition to having a whole life insurance contract, I have four of them in total, two in my name, one in fiance and one in my mom. So I uh, participate in funding all of them. In addition, I have what's called a first position home equity line of credit, right? The credit limit is 567,000, right? It's really 566 in like 300, something like that, but I'm just gonna round up, call it 567 is the credit limit. I owe 560 at the moment. And what I'm doing right now is the velocity banking concept where I'm dumping all of my income in here plus fiance's income, right? So, and plus mom's income. So three incomes are going into the line of credit. Guess where I'm saving money? Remember I told you my strategy? The money was being stored in a savings account. Guess where that money is being stored now? Right here. So I'm sending all of my income, all of it, it gets parked in here. I then withdraw money to pay expenses. So I pay all my expenses and then all the cash flow remains in the line. It's gonna bring the line down month by month, month by month, month by month, month by month. By the time I get to my anniversary date of my policy that I'm funding 70K a year, 2024 June is my anniversary date, like June 16th, something like that. I have to 
come up with 70 grand. Where, where do you think the 70 grand is coming from? Right here. So I am paying off or you could say paying down debt on the HELOC. Every dollar I pay into paying off debt is liquid and available because it's a line of credit. Then I'm taking from there to fund my policy, which that continues to grow. And then I borrow from the policy to throw it right back in here. And the goal is to move the 560 that is here and move it into the policy, right? That's my goal. Not just that, but also leveraging. You see, once I move the 560 into the policy, guess what happens over here? There's 560,000 of available credit. But see, uh, it's never going to go to zero, the HELOC, right? So my intention is not necessarily to pay it off and then do nothing with it and just look at it. It's not my intention. This HELOC is open for the next 10 years. It's revolving. This HELOC is going to increase by, by the property appreciating over a long period of time. So within those 10 years, I'm going to be funding policies through here and then investing by acquiring more properties that produce more cash flow and then investing in the personal brand that brings in more income. And it just creates this wonderful velocity of money, right? This wonderful speed at which money moves, okay? At which it circulates before it leaves my economy. Every single dollar is being used multiple times over and over and over again. So action steps. It's been a very, very in-depth masterclass on the infinite banking process in 2024. Went over a lot of different things here. I have two resources, two people I recommend, and this will really help you because I used to only have one recommendation. That was my mentor and still mentor, coach, business partner, and, f and friend, longtime friend, one of um, the longest person, longest individual I know in the life insurance space. His name is Steve Parisi. He has a YouTube channel called IBC Global, right? From 2018 all the way till now and onward, I've sent all my business, I've sent all my leads and all my referrals to Steve Parisi. Steve Parisi and his team are phenomenal as it relates to putting properly designed high cash value life insurance policies in place so that you may use it for whatever you wish. They have a phenomenal team. They have a phenomenal support system. They're available Monday through Friday. You call, there's a client. You get a, you get a phone number to call just for clients only. They know you're a client. They help you, they serve you. They let you know when your anniversary date's coming up. They strategize with you every single year. So they show you how your policy is performing. You set up that call. I personally have my policies designed with Steve Parisi and his team, right? They've served me wonderfully over the years. Over the years, I've been able to build some really cool relationships with other uh, infant banking uh, insurance agents and people who sell whole life insurance. Been able to build some wonderful, really cool relations. One in particular. So again, Steve Parisi, I have a link below, link it to him. Or again, you can email me and say, hey, where do I go to start? I'll refer you his way. I made a relationship over the last two years now with a gentleman named Caleb. And he wrote a book called The And Asset, which I have. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So right here. So he wrote this book called The And Asset. He gave it to me in person. We met for the first time at FinCon. This was 2020 or 2021, something like that. So we met for the first time and then we collaborated together like almost a year later. And then after that collaboration, he, you know, we spoke a couple times. Then he invites me to his mastermind to be his guest at, at, at his event. And I met everybody. I met Garrett Gunderson. I, I met all the greats in the, in the insurance space. It was freaking cool. And I met Caleb's wife. I met, you know, his whole entire team. Really cool. Well then, so Caleb also does life insurance, helps people design policies for high cash value and use it to, you know, invest, pay off debt, whatever it may be. He has a whole team. Very cool. Now, I've never got a policy designed by his team personally. Okay. I went through their process and it's great. It's phenomenal. But I already had policies in place. So I, I'm, I wasn't looking to get another one. I'm, I'm not really in the position right now to get more policies. I, I just don't need it, right? Because I have four that I'm, you know, funding and things are going great. So I got Caleb for my taxes. So Steve Parisi does not do taxes, strictly does whole life. I get with Caleb and his team, come to find out they do taxes, right? So I switched to his team for tax purposes, but also recognize that they do life insurance and they have a good process and I like what they do. So now I send people both ways. So now I just give my clients options. I love to give my clients and my audience 
options. If you really enjoy Steve Parisi and his work, boom, you go there. If you really enjoy Caleb and his team and what they're doing, you go there. Or if you don't know me, you don't know them, and you want to shop around, you can go to Steve and Caleb at the same time, go through their process, and see who impresses you the most, um, who really speaks to, to you directly in terms of what you need and what you're searching for and what you're trying to accomplish. It, it's, it's cool. So those are my two current partnerships in the life insurance space to get a high cash value design set up. Deep Breezy, IBC Global, Caleb the End Asset, Better Wealth, and they also do taxes. So if you're a business owner and you don't like how your current system is set up for accounting or bookkeeping, strategizing over your taxes, reducing your tax liability. With Caleb and his team, I've been able to you know, reduce my tax liability further, which means more cash flow, which means more money I can save or invest, right? It, 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 so they provided a lot of value there. And I'm a client of theirs as well as an affiliate you know, partner uh, where I refer business, whether it's taxes or life insurance. So those are your action steps. Is at, if you get past the study and research, right? And you wanna go a step further and actually speak to an agent, build a relationship with an agent, those are two options. There are other very good content creators in the space. You've got Garrett Gunderson and his team. You've got Chris Kirkpatrick, Life 180 and his team. You've got, you know, uh, my buddy Sebastian Boyer uh, with the Approve Guy. You know, he does policy designs uh, with, with his clients. And you've got, kind of go back to my list here. You've got the Nelson Nash Institute, obviously, right? Where you can literally like go to their site and then you can search a infinite banking practitioner like in your local area. Maybe you want to be able to, you know, meet someone in person. You, you would go through that way. You've got a, a banking truce, the money advantage. You've got Wealth Nation. Um, who, else is, who else is really doing it right now? Comment below if you know um, other content creators that I maybe haven't mentioned that are designing policies for infinite banking that, that have a phenomenal team that you're a client of you personally know and they helped you and served you love to just give give my audience options so those those are your action steps right there and then you can go back and watch my case study videos on this concept and and how it gets applied with with real numbers and real situations and that's going to help you build up the confidence that you need press forward and do what you need to do my name is denzel rodriguez your personal finance geek of the 21st century have a wonderful day god bless we'll be talking soon.